Leroy has been no-tilling for at least 40 years and I believe he's cover cropped almost the same amount of time. So uh, Jim said all these soils came off of Leroy's farm and he is right except for this soil in the center. This is tilled soil and you can't find that here at Leroy's. So that got brought in. These, these other soils sort of you can tell it, um, this, this came out of a, a, a long-term grass section on the farm that's there to control erosion. This is uh, soybeans and it's just really right across the road over there. <clears throat> you can almost see where we dug that out. This is uh, a uh, multi-species cover crop and, and this of course is the same soil we're standing in. Bill started the pump and rainfall is simulated on five representative samples from Leroy's farm, except for the third sample. Our samples from the left are from a perennial grass field, then a no-till residue just after wheat harvest, then we have a bare soil from a conventional tillage field, followed by a sample from a no-till soybean field, followed by a diverse multi-species cover crop. We can observe the effects of rainfall on these representative fields based on the type of management that has been employed. Notice the two rows of jars placed under each sample. The back jars represent water infiltration into the soil. The presence of vegetation and the management that has been used on the fields greatly affects how much water makes it into the soil profile. The front jars are positioned to catch runoff, the water that flows across the surface and is not infiltrated into the soil. Again, vegetation and management can impact how much runoff we have. Notice the perennial grass sample on the left. Here we have optimum infiltration and no runoff to speak of at all. All the water is being captured in the soil, and we can ensure it is kept there and not percolated into the groundwater by implementing practices that encourage soil aggregation, making the soil into a sponge to hold water and nutrients. Let's consider the agricultural practices that help build healthy soil. In essence, we want to increase aggregation, contribute soil organic matter, increase biodiversity, buffer soil temperature, and minimize soil compaction and disturbance. Sounds like a lot, right? Well, not really, if we break them down into six basic principles. Let's take a quick look at the principles that will define our soil management practices. Minimizing tillage preserves soil structure, encourages aggregation, and keeps soil carbon in the soil profile where it belongs. Tillage brings a flush of oxygen into the soil that spurs microbes into a feeding frenzy on carbon molecules. We reduce tillage through the use of perennial pasture and minimum or no-till of cover crops. Maintaining living roots in the soil for as much of the year as possible feeds soil microorganisms all year. Also, by maintaining living roots and leaving grazing residual, we're covering the soil all year, forming an armor to protect it from loss of moisture and nutrients. Maintaining species diversity is achieved with cover crop mixes and the use of diverse perennial pasture mixes. Try to incorporate warm season and cool season plants, both grasses and broadleaf plants, in the same fields. Managing grazing is accomplished by planning for an appropriate grazing recovery period on your paddocks, keeping in mind that plants need various recovery periods depending upon the species, the time of year, and the moisture content. Overgrazing, or not allowing adequate plant recovery, reduces root mass, photosynthesis, and the amount of carbon in the soil, decreasing soil life. Proper grazing builds soil. Finally, utilizing animal impact and grazing impact provides nutrient cyclings in pastures and contributes to soil organic matter. Additionally, the grazing action on forage plants encourages root growth and root exudation of plant sugars that feed soil microorganisms. Now let's look at the rest of our samples. These soils have had some or all of the five soil health principles applied to them. Notice the lack of runoff from the wheat stubble, the soybean field, and especially the cover crop field samples. Also, the soybean and cover crop fields have near empty bottles in the back row, indicating that the soil present, a mere two to three inches in these samples, are soaking up all the water. This is what happens when our soil acts like a sponge. Any rain that falls will be captured and made available for plant use. Of all our samples, the bare soil from the conventionally tilled field has absolutely the most runoff. Nutrients in that water, as well as soil particles, are free to travel into waterways causing algae blooms and eutrophication. This is a reason why two of our soil health principles are keeping the soil covered and maintaining living roots in the soil. 
This sample is a drastic visual that shows emphatically why tillage and bare soil should be avoided as much as possible. Special thanks to Leroy Bupp of Buppland Farm, the Pennsylvania No-Till Alliance, and the Chesapeake Bay Foundation for their contributions to this video.